Good evening. I'm Lara Trump in for Eric Bowling. In times like this, it becomes clearer who our friends are and who our enemies are, both outside and within. It becomes clearer who is on the side of democracy and who outright sides with evil and terror. As Israel faces yet another existential threat since its creation as a nation state, we are also facing one right here at home. Today in Israel, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin laid out the truth about the terrorist organization that is Hamas. We're with you, Mr. Prime Minister, and as, as the President said, uh, we have your back. And, uh, you know, it's an awful week. Uh, it's a uh, it's, uh, disgusting acts uh, by this uh, terrorist group. Uh, and uh, as you know, I was the guy that uh, initially put the ISIS campaign together, and I, I know a lot about ISIS, and this is, uh, this is worse than what I saw with ISIS. Worse than what I saw with ISIS, says Austin, and yet there are those within our own government in high-level positions who would dare to shield and protect these vicious terrorists and murderers, like the squad's own AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. It states our responsibility is to the stability and the security of the region. That means being able to support, uh, not support, yes, Israel in its defensive capacities, right, in its ability in, in, in that context. But it also means that the United States has a responsibility to ensure accountability to human rights, to prevent the ethnic cleansing of Palestinians. Members of our own Congress actually oppose Israel defending itself against terror. These are the same members, by the way, who are against Americans being able to defend themselves by employing the Second Amendment of the Constitution. This idea that Israel should defend itself against attacks on civilians seems to disgust the members of the congressional squad. Recall back in September of 2021 when AOC shed crocodile tears, breaking down crying on the House floor following a vote to give another $1 billion to Israel in order to restore its Iron Dome missile interception system. The fact that AOC would weep like an unstable child because, God forbid, Israel should defend itself against barbaric savages whose entire existence is devoted to the eradication of Jews and Christians worldwide tells you everything you need to know about many of those who make up the Democratic Party. But it's the progressive left that now have handicapped the U.S. The, world, the war on U.S. oil and energy combined with our weakness and division, all brought to you by the left, by the way, are also a threat to our economy and even our own existence. What if any of these countries threaten to cut off our gas supply? The position we find ourselves in, vulnerable to threats exactly like that one, can be credited to Joe Biden and his entire administration's policies. Perhaps it's not quite entirely fair to say that Joe Biden is to blame for what's happening in the Middle East right now. After all, Hamas has always been out for blood and Iran has always been willing to support them and other terrorist organizations with all their might. But what we can say is that Democrat foreign policy, including the eight damaging years of Barack Obama, has certainly lent itself to these conflicts and incidents. Today, sadly, we saw clear evidence that the enemy is not only out there, but is also right here on our own soil, cheering for terrorist acts, applauding the barbaric acts committed against the innocent by the Iran-supported terrorist organization of Hamas. Let's be clear. If you're cheering for Hamas, you're cheering for the same element that caused 9-11. Looking at you, Harvard, looking at you, squad members, looking at you, radical leftists, Hamas is ISIS, or worse. Hamas is Al-Qaeda, or worse. They may be different names, but they are the same violent extremist ideology. So if you're rooting for the extermination of Israel, you're most certainly also setting the stage for the eradication of America. This is where you live and where our children play. 
And yet Joe Biden continues to allow the import of religious extremists who hate us. Just today, two more were apprehended at our southern border. But how many more are making their way in? And soon, they'll be acting out that hate. And when they start blowing up things, they won't exclude you because you waved around a red, black, white, and green flag. When they start raping women in parks, they won't exclude you because you gave a fiery speech in their defense. No, Palestinians and Hamas are not the same. But if you support what Hamas did in the Palestinians' name, then you're supporting the very same thinking that flew an airplane into the towers on 9-11. And if you support any of that, you are un-American and should not be allowed to enjoy the freedoms this country affords us.